Dear Violet Evergarden, I don't know if you'll ever hear this, but I need to get this off my chest. When I first met you, I didn't know what to think of you. You were discovering a part of yourself that was hidden inside you. A part that was full of emotions, that had something to explore, that had something to say, and I wanted to be a part of that journey. But as time went by, something was not right. I wanted to love you, but I couldn't. There was something about you, about the world you were in, about the way your story was being conveyed, that just didn't make me love you in the way that I wanted. I wanted you to be like all the other greats, but you weren't. At least not for me. You had so many amazing moments that touched so many people around you, so many beautiful memories that lasted for a lifetime, and I wanted to have those memories too. But all I had were the memories when I saw you for the first time. Memories that I cherish, but not exactly the best of memories. You were on the verge of greatness, but something was missing. And then, three and a half years later, everything changed. Letters, what are they? We believe these to be meaningless, but we still use letters to this day. Letters that have grown, changed, and morphed into an almost arbitrary process of our modern day lives. We think letters have ceased to exist, but that could not be further from the truth. In some ways, the art of writing is even more prevalent nowadays than ever before. It's just that we don't realize it. How meaningful each word can be. How it can convey something joyful or something terribly sad. But a connection is made between two people. A connection that lives through the words. Words that we created to communicate with each other. Words that used to be symbols. Symbols that used to be drawings. Drawings that used to be nothing. We didn't have any of this. But thanks to the way we evolved, to our ability to walk on two legs, to use our hands and voices in ways no other species could, it led us to become the people we are today. Not just having the capacity to communicate, but most importantly, the need for it. And that need is perfectly demonstrated in Violet Evergarden. During the 5th Kyoto Animation Awards, a story written by Kana Akatsuki and illustrated by Akiko Takase won the grand prize, the first ever work to win such a prestigious prize during the run of its awards. Not only was it published as a light novel series under Kyoto Animation's imprint, but it was also later adapted into an anime by the same studio, one that was released worldwide on Netflix for everyone to see, and it instantly caught everyone's eyes. The beauty of each shot, the captivating emotions in each scene, the world that it was set in, as if it harkened back to an older time long gone, and the exquisite nature of its orchestral soundtrack brought to life the wonderful world and character named Violet Evergarden. What's fascinating about this story and its protagonist is how she is not someone who understands emotions. She thinks logically about everything and everyone. She isn't accustomed to understand people in the same way everyone else is, and that logic will end up providing her the tools to understand it even more. As if she had just been born, as if a brand new door had opened in front of her. All because she wanted to understand the meaning behind the following words. <sighs> this is what pushes her to be an auto memory doll, a job belonging to those who can convey people's emotions through a letter. And through that, Violet will get to know each person better, will find the meaning behind their words. Because words aren't just communication, they are also the very thing that prevents us to communicate. In other words, we are scared to say what we are feeling, we don't know how to. Sometimes we say goodbye to someone, when in reality we just want to say hello. Sometimes we say we hate that very person, when we actually love them so much. Sometimes we don't even say anything. As if the very silence conveys exactly what is going on inside us. And it's the auto memory doll's job to capture every little thing we are conveying through our words, our actions. We see our protagonist learning and growing throughout its 13 episode run. 
meeting all kinds of people, from the richest and most noble to ones who have difficulty in staying alive. And it's through those people that we get to know Violet even more. It's this storytelling technique that I find extremely interesting in this series, one known as the unreliable narrator. This term is used when we learn about someone through the eyes of one person. Meaning, instead of us witnessing a story as if it's all happening as it really is, we rather know it through one's point of view. There are many examples like this in cinema. One will always be Citizen Kane, where we find out about the life of Charles Foster Kane from the recollections of his acquaintances. Another is Rashomon, where we learn about the events of a crime through three completely different points of view. It's this idea that there might be more to a story than meets the eye. And Violet Evergarden uses this aspect in a very subtle way. It's not as clear cut as every other story that uses this technique. Rather, it just shows up from time to time to remind us that we are almost viewing history as it happens, or more importantly, the impact that Violet has on each person. It can be one who didn't know what to say to her brother, or a father that tragically lost her daughter to cancer, or even a daughter that loses her mother to a disease. And all of these people have something in common. What Violet has left them. A letter to her brother with one line that exemplified one's feelings. Or assisting a famous writer in writing his next play. Or 50 years worth of words that one's mother left her daughter. And how Violet was crucially important in that process. Each time we witness one of these episodes, we learn more about Violet through their eyes. How their lives changed because of her. And as each episode follows, we realize that our protagonist regains a bit of her humanity, regains an understanding of herself that she did not have. And through other people's traumas, she comes to understand her own, the traumatic experience of her past. A tragic past can be really difficult to handle. It is normally associated with losing someone dear to us, someone who was able to be a massive part of our lives, and for some reason was taken away from us. It can be expected, or worse, unexpected. Or sometimes that person is still alive somewhere, but we just can't meet them. Each character we meet has a heartbreaking past. Each person has a devastating story to tell. And through them, we get to know Violet's past even more. How someone so young was trained to be a killer. How someone was so devoid of life. And thanks to one person, she started to understand about life a little bit more. One person that captivated her for some reason. One person that left something so essential to her. The freedom to be whoever she wanted to be. But in that process, Violet loses him and is believed to be dead by so many around her. It destroys her. It consumes her. She doesn't want to accept it as being real. And through this, she also comes to realize who she once was. A killing machine that took other people's lives without any second thoughts. That's what she was trained to do. She was a tool. She had no free will. And she eventually starts to grasp what she is truly feeling. The guilt. The lives of so many that died because of her. The arms and hands that she used to kill every single person. Ones that are now part of her past. And the robotic arms that she now has are a reminder of who she once was. But it's through those new arms that she comes to do something that she has never done before. And that is writing letters. Ones that are able to express something that a voice simply cannot do. It is why we see a letter flying in the air in the beginning of the show. A letter that Violet had written for the person who she wants to meet again. And the letter flies through the countryside, through the city, and shows us a journey. A journey that only letters can provide us. To connect with those who are far away. To let them know what we truly mean to them. So that our voices can be heard from miles and miles away. It's why we see Amy Bartlett shouting Taylor's name at the end of Eternity and the Auto Memory Doll, just as Taylor had done during her upbringing. To never forget the bond they once shared, to never forget the moments they had together, to never forget. Because letters don't just travel through space, they also travel 
through time. Because once those words are imprinted on paper, it lasts for all eternity. Reminding us of the people who came before us. Of those who wrote so many powerful stories, poignant emotions, horrifying tales, or simply the deep profound love they felt for someone else. They contain memories. Memories that make us realize who these people were in a moment in time. Whether it was the people who we once met, or a younger version of ourselves, or maybe even people who we never got the chance to meet, who are a part of our history, that changed the entire world with their mere existence. The text that lays before us is proof of that, and sometimes we find a few words that were not meant for us, but we discover how impactful that person really was. This is the opening scene of Violet Evergarden, the movie, and this is the movie that changed everything. At this point, I'm no longer the same person who witnessed the show three years ago, and my issues with the show seem to be less and less important. But what were those issues? Why didn't I truly love this show in the first place? The reason was the execution of its narrative. At times, I felt like the characters did something that I felt was unnecessary, deciding to go all out with their emotions, rather than using subtlety to convey them. I remember finishing the series and not feeling the same way as the show wanted me to. It felt like some scenes could have had even more staying power if held back momentarily. But understanding that this was not the end of the road, I was patient. I waited. Waited until I saw the end of the story. And that I did. That's when something struck me. I was taken on this incredible journey, one that also started with an unreliable narrator, but instead of us just witnessing their point of view, we now find out about our main character through the concept of time. And just like the first episode of the show, we see a letter flying high, one that was also written by Violet Evergarden, one that also travels through the world, but now it shows us a time that used to exist, which I felt was super interesting. It clearly continues the story from its latest entry, but it's told as it was all in the past. So now I was questioning, why? No other entry of the series, its OVA and its first film do this. But when we watch Violet Evergarden the movie, we come to understand why. It's not just telling the story of our main character, it's letting us know how our auto memory doll days came to an end, and how it's a metaphor for the theme of the entire film. Throughout our lifetime, we've always gone through enormous change, ones that will completely shape how we live from that point on. One of the biggest instances of this was with the Industrial Revolution. It brought about railroads that connected many cities and towns together. People were able to travel to other parts of the country or even the world in ways they had never done before. So not only would we be able to arrive at a destination much quicker, but also it would speed up commerce itself. Societies grew and rural areas became more urban thanks to its existence. Two of my favorite films of all time showcase this perfectly. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valley and Once Upon a Time in the West. Both films illustrated through its themes how the old days of the West came to an end, all thanks to the arrival of railroads. And this movie conveys this notion as well, with the invention of the telephone. Its existence would forever change how people communicated with each other. They didn't need to write letters anymore. They could just use this new device and talk to someone else wherever they were. They didn't have to wait for the mail to arrive. Space and time was cut short even more. And the movie demonstrates this by focusing on the building of a tower. One that resembles that of the Eiffel Tower. But also one that was influenced by the Eiffel Tower itself. The Tokyo Tower. One that would be built for broadcasting television and would eventually be used for radio purposes too. The story takes inspiration from Japan's technological advancements during the 1950s and 60s whilst continuing to pay homage to the culture and significance of European history. And is able through its fictional setting and story convey to us something that really happened. That the art of writing letters would eventually be forgotten. And I say art because with everything in life, what starts as a need turns into art, particularly when it comes to our own expression. But what I really love about the film is that it doesn't say that letters are better than telephones. Rather, it makes us feel immensely connected to this lost art of writing whilst also demonstrating why things change in the first place. And that is told through its side story.
Yuris is a young boy who unfortunately will pass away. But through the use of a telephone, he's able to contact Violet and convinces her to write three letters for him. A letter for his mom, a letter for his dad, and a letter for his younger brother. Once the letters were written, they both made a promise to each other that she would give those letters to his family on the day that he dies. A promise that she will do her best to keep. But just as Violet is about to leave, he stops her. There is another he wants to leave a letter for, to a young boy called Lucas, one who he had a really close relationship with. But when Yuris got sick, he told Lucas to never visit him. This sick boy didn't want this young child to see him in that state. He was too ashamed of it. And so, it was decided that Violet would help him write one last letter. But just as they were going to do so, Yuris got even more sick. The last letter would have to wait. It didn't seem like nothing much. It seemed like this would eventually get written. But in reality, this scene would set the stage for one of the most profound moments I've ever witnessed in cinema. The film then carries on. Carries on showing us the power of letters, especially through one that is found in a secluded place. Letting our protagonist know that the person that left something so personal to her, the major who she lost in a war, the one who uttered those everlasting words, could still be alive. And so, she travels day and night to go see him, to see if he's actually still living and breathing, to tell him what she has always wanted to say, that she finally understands the meaning behind those words. No, wait, maybe that's not what she wanted to say. Maybe she wanted to say something even more profound, even more honest. She was getting closer. And then, after talking with a young boy, she realizes that he is indeed alive. But whereas Violet wanted to see him with her own eyes, Gilbert didn't. He is ashamed to be in front of her. He is ashamed to have used her as a tool during the war. He felt like he had no right to see her ever again. Our protagonist yells for him on the other side of a door. A door that separates the encounter we have yearned for throughout the whole series. That Violet has waited for so many years. She is finally able to tell him what she has truly wanted to say. It's not that she understands what I love you means, it's that she wants to profess those same words to him. But even then, Gilbert doesn't want to open that door. Distraught, Violet walks away. With each step, with each droplet of rain falling beside her. Stuck in a lighthouse at night, she trembles. She wants to see him at all costs, but he doesn't let her. Let's pause for a moment. I was feeling everything in this instant. The build up to this event, the tension, the frustration, and the way the music and imagery conveyed each scene. Each moment made me more and more engaged to what was going on. I was feeling my eyes becoming slightly heavier, and I was remembering my own life. Of the times I too wanted to say everything to someone else. Of the moments I wanted to confess my feelings to someone else, and how I wanted those feelings to be heard. But many times throughout my life, they weren't. Just like Violet's words weren't being heard either. It frustrated me to no end, especially because I saw myself so much in this protagonist. I too did not understand people's emotions. I too did not understand the subtlety of one's words, of one's actions, and I hated myself for it. I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to comprehend. I wanted to learn. And one day, I decided I wanted to be a filmmaker, to tell my own stories, to convey my own emotions. And while learning this incredible art form, learning how to write scripts, learning about subtext, I came to realize more and more what others were like around me. I started to pick up on people's emotions in a way I never had. I felt like I suddenly could connect with each and every single person, of their sorrows, of their pain, and I wanted to help them. Violet's growth was my own, and so seeing her distraught by not being able to finally see the person who everyone thought was dead made me mad. When suddenly, it was about a sick boy who was about to pass away, about a promise that Violet had once made, but our main character was nowhere near him. She had travelled across the country, and now this young boy was about to die. Her promise was about to be broken. Immediately, the letters were sent to the boy's parents and younger brother. But there was one letter left to send. One letter that never got written. And now, the sick boy was going to leave this world without being able to tell someone else how important he was to him. Violet feels guilty. 
as if she couldn't be trusted. It consumes her. But when Yuris finds out where Violet had went, he wasn't mad. Rather, he was happy for her. It was at this moment that my eyes became heavier. It could have been so easy to go through a more dramatic route by making him feel disappointed in our protagonist. But no, he smiles. He knows how important it was to her to see that man again. He understands her. This moment got me in a way I wasn't expecting. He made me care even more about this young character who I had just met and was about to die. He didn't deserve this happening to him. Just like everybody else who died tragically in this show. And it made me even more sad that Lucas was never going to know what Yuris had to say. But then, an idea presents itself. A way for Yuris to convey his feelings to that young boy. And that was through the use of a telephone. The invention of this new device made it possible for Yuris to talk one last time to Lucas. And say everything he wanted to tell him. More notably the words, I'm sorry. And soon after, he passes away. The film brilliantly shows that it doesn't matter how you communicate with someone else, as long as it gives you the possibility to do so. Violet was able to know that Gilbert was still alive thanks to a letter, and Yuris was able to talk to Lucas thanks to a telephone. It was then and there where the heaviness of my eyes rolled down my face. It was then and there that I knew that Violet Evergarden was one of the greatest things I had ever witnessed in my life. Yes, the ending is still captivating, not because Violet and Gilbert do get together, but rather how it is shown. It is melodramatic, it does go far and away beyond what it could have done. And while there was a part of me that wanted to be more subdued, it didn't matter to me. Each scene was still gorgeous, the lighting of the moon soaring on their presence, the sea shining all of its beauty. I have no idea how Kyoto Animation made the sea look this good, but they did and I'm still thinking about it. But what matters to me the most is what happened with Yuris' story. It's one of the best scenes I've ever come across in any art form, because it is the moment where their stories and themes converge all into one, as so many other stories had done beforehand, and made me think so much about myself, about the words I have yet to say to so many people. But nowadays, there are so many forms of communication, there are so many ways for us to convey what we are feeling, whether through a sentence in the form of a text message or through a screen that we choose to pour our hearts out. It does sadden me that the art of writing letters has lost its way. But the truth is, we reinvent constantly and find ourselves expressing in completely new ways. It's why I chose to be a filmmaker. And it's also why I have this YouTube channel. You might think I'm just analyzing media that I love, but that's not entirely true. Every video I make is because I have something to say. At times, I carry too many emotions and I don't know what to do with them. And so, I resort to doing things like this. I don't just do this because I want to. It's because I need to. I have to express what I'm feeling that correlates to so many moments in my life, to so many people who crossed paths with me, to understand myself a little bit more. And hopefully there are people out there who will listen to what I have to say, who will connect with me too. I find myself writing in a way I never knew how. Just like Violet herself did. We are one and the same. And just like her, I have something to say. Dear Violet Evergarden, I don't know if you'll ever hear this, but I need to get this off my chest. Thank you. Your story, your impact, your words will never be forgotten. Thank you for watching my video. I didn't think I would like the movie as much as I did, but it ended up having a massive impact on me. I want to thank all of my patrons for supporting me thus far. I can't thank you enough. I truly love making each video, and so for me to keep doing this, your support is crucial. And thus, if you want to see more content like this, I would be forever grateful if you could support with any amount you can. It would also mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit that like button. And in the meantime, why not check out some of the other videos I've made so far. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.